Welcome back, everybody, hey. to GDPG. Hey. So I noticed something while we were on this pause screen. Yep. See that little timeline or, like, level structure? Yep. <laughs> since, we, <laughs> since we went to the crown room, see that little, like, bleh? Yeah. It's because we went, we diverted from the path yeah. that we're supposed to go into. I thought that was really cool. It's it's this tiny little flare, but, like, It makes it you wonder everything. how, like, far you can delineate Ooh. from that path. Yeah, right? I wonder what ha Yeah, I mean, I imagine we can go to the crown room again. Uh, we left off here, and I decided I was going to choose a crown of haste. Last thing I want to point out, actually, before we move on, was simply <sighs> this. The crown of risk. More drops when at full HP, less drops when not. Which means that, that all of these are usually kind of like random effects and stuff like that. Uh, but this one is the only optimization one that I, I can really point out. Um, it just it, It's That's the only fair. optimization one because if you are technically a perfect player, then you will benefit from this one. I mean, also depending on the character you're playing, right? Like if you were playing um, Melting, you basically never have... Not full health. Not full health, because <laughs> you're either dead or you're not. Yeah. Uh, but if you play the other character, the uh, the bandit one, um, then that's the, the rebel, worst. I think yeah. it's called. Then that's the worst, because you're always injured, and yeah. you'll find out what that means later. It is my favorite character, so I really want to unlock that person, but I don't know if we're going to have the luxury of doing that. We'll so get anyway, there eventually. Uh, what was it? Crown of haste. Boom. And uh, also, the, the crown follows me now. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering about that. I was like, are you going to be wearing it? But I think having it follow you is better from an aesthetic point of, of view because, hey, if we can get more than one crown, suddenly, oh no, oh no, no, like oh no, cluster of crowns in your head. Um, and B, they don't have to like, oh, well, there's big dog. B, if uh, they put it on your head, then I'm sure it would kind of like clash with each of the characters, and I don't know, it'd be a confusing mess of like the best way to to visually represent it on each individual character. So I think it was smart. Basically, yeah, they have it just floating behind you. Plus, that even begs the question of what really are these crowns? If like, oh, it's so good, right? Oh no! Ooh. Oh, oh yeah. But like, oh, uh, those went by really quick. All right, cool. Uh, yeah. but like, what are these crowns? What? Why do you get this benefit if it's like hovering be behind using you? Using the triple. What? Watch. Look, look at this thing. I'm gonna it's, go it's ammo a, so fast. Yeah, it's a big ammo waster. Like, it's nice if you're fighting a crowd, but ultimately, I'd rather have something like the Gatling gun. Or the... the what is this? Tri you only have 20 shots, but I'm really curious. Oh my god, it's cursed. I can't replace it. Oh! That's why purple's following. Oh! Uh, let's see. If I was wondering what that was. The Yeah, one of the crowns talked about cursed chests, and uh, that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, it's a cool weapon. Shotgun and that. Terrible combination. <laughs> At least uh, you have yeah. your other gun now. Like, still. Kills lower your reload time, more HP for medkits, extra chest spawn. Ooh, that goes... <laughs> Open mind. Yeah, we're gonna do that one. I love their, their little thumbnail images for those abilities. Whoa! So this is really the first time... Well, I guess we kind of saw Eyes' ability in uh, the... Um, that under oh, Jesus! Oh, man! Don't touch those that things that teleport every oh, time man. man those crystals are they wreck you oh that's kind of how nuclear throne goes though you meet mm. an enemy for like the first time you die to it and then you meet it again later on the next playthrough and you live about three seconds to see what it actually does then you die again four five six seven so is the throne room in zone eight do you think uh, I don't yes. remember how many they said there were. Because we were just in World 4, and I think these are boss fights, maybe. Oh, okay, that makes sense. So, four, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. Man, and to think that even Zone 4 is just, like, incredibly challenging. Oh! Crystals! Ah! Bleh. And no new character, huh? Well, there is one that we still haven't played, and that's... Yeah, we could, but I would rather play that when doing co-op. Oh, dang. Well, I know. Let's let's play a little bit with Crystal and then in the next episode sure. let's do some co-op. We'll we'll play some Crystal. We'll show some Crystal. It'd be pretty funny though if we end up unlocking uh, one no. of the other characters using Crystal. No crown. So, okay, yeah, I don't think getting the crown unlocks it. I think doing whatever their requirements are unlocks it. So you can still like get the crown the normal way or you can start with a crown based mm. on the unlocking criteria 
Um, and I think that's a good way of doing it, personally. Because then it would just be about, you know, how can I get to the crown room fast as fast as possible so I can just unlock all of them. Yeah. It, it gets boring. It's less fun that way. Optimization of unlocking things. Or yeah. you could and do it, what, like, a lot of AAA games have been doing lately, and you can just spend money or in-game currency <laughs> to just unlock them, and then what a waste of time that was. Right. Or not waste of time, as it were, I suppose. It's... it's... I, ah, I hate that, that business model, right. too, because yeah. it's like... Oh, the crystal time is shortened. Oh. Oh, that's good. I think that's important. But, like, okay, so, like, look at old games, right? Where you, you've played those games that had, like, cheat codes and stuff and, like, the yeah. odd mode or, or whatever. Um, and as a kid, it's fun for a little while, right? Because you're like, ah, nothing can destroy me and I have a big head and, you know, <laughs> all these other fun little cheat code things. Um, but now it's like those cheat code codes are sold as, you know, in-game purchases or as DLC or whatever it is. And, like, that was something free that you would, or, like, Game Shark would give you yeah. in your games in the past. You one and now Game it's, Shark and you basically had it all. And now these publishing houses are getting more money for, like, basically selling you those cheat codes to make the game suddenly not be as much fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, but it's like you desire it as a player because the game's challenging. So of course you're like, oh yeah, I want this cool stuff that'll make the game like, that'll make me my character more powerful. And at the end of the day, it kind of ruins some of the experience, it, unless it's well designed, right? But like, it's a fifty-fifty shot, I think, with a lot of publishers and game developers out there. Ah, oh, so. <laughs> But it's a shame, ultimately. I don't. I'm. I've never been a fan of that business model, and it's... some some bigger developers have have labeled me a purist. And that's fine. <laughs> Whatever. I'll take it. I like the traditional game develop or game deployment model. I like getting a full package. I think Nuclear Throne worked really well as it's like a early access game where it's being developed as. People are purchasing it, mm -hmm. um, but that's simply because it allowed them to build this really robust community around the game, um, and it, I, it probably helped them flesh out a lot of like design flaws in the earlier versions of the game. Um, but I think that only really works for games like Nuclear Throne that are based on random elements and about frequent replays. A lot of other games, I don't think that makes a lot of sense, you know? A lot of things don't make sense. Short-lived. It's because I uh, unlocked from the crystal, and then it took too much time, and I pressed it again, and I didn't go back in crystal mode, <laughs> and I just got murdered. And I was sitting there fucking around, being like, oh, I'm going to kill you with your own shots. Now go to the crystal. Uh, well, let's, let's stick around a little bit with at least another character. We still have about two and a half minutes. Uh, so don't die for two and a half minutes. I want to play. What did I just do? Did I do? I did daily. I don't know what daily is, so we're just gonna try it with melting. I think daily is like a leaderboard ranking. Sure. It's been pretty popular with a lot of randomly generated or random, um, yeah, like procedural generated games of late. Like Binding of Isaac does it. Nuclear Throne does it. Um, I'm trying to think of some others. I don't think Downwell does it. Maybe. Uh, I don't think so. Um, they could though. They, I mean, they like, could. It was still not a bad idea for a game like that. Yeah, absolutely. And like for players like me, I don't care. I've never really cared about leaderboards or any of that jazz. Um, but it, it totally no. oh, it's it's board. perfect a perfect model to appease those players. Mm -hmm. And it, it kind of justifies like you practicing not in the the ranking system. So like if you're just playing the normal game mode that isn't ranked, I think it justifies it because. Now you're getting that training, that practice in. So when you go do the daily challenge, now you're you're prepped for it, and everybody is. It gives it a lot of replayability too. Mm -hmm. It's 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 sort of smart though too, from a point of design that I'm not as big of a fan of. But it gives players to come back every day. Um, and while I don't like that for the same reason I don't like Facebook games that are built on time systems where it's like, oh, if you don't come back in like five hours, then your plants die in Farmville or or more commonly, it's like, um, I mean, I feel like that's a completely different instance, honestly, well, but so, 
I mean, okay, so the best example is one of the mobile games I've been picked up recently, It you gain, like, energy as time goes on, and the players come back sooner because if they're at full energy, the mindset becomes, well, now I'm not racking up more energy, I should spend some so that while I'm not playing the game, I'm still racking up more energy. Yes. And so that model of design is purely to get your players coming back to your game more frequently. The reason I don't like that is because it's a manipulation. Mm -hmm. It's purely to get your players in your game more often, whether or not they want to be there. And I think that, that kills some of it for me. I don't... I mean, I still don't know if, if a leaderboard like that is... It's, I think it's, same thing. It's, it's kind of manipulation purely for the achievement people that like to put scores on leaderboards. Yes. Now, on, on the other side of that coin, I think it's also a good balancing system so that those players can't just play a million times until they get the best score. So it sort of is an equalizer on that same level. That's fair. Um, and that's why, like, in a game like Nuclear Throne, I, I have conflicted feelings, so ultimately I'm, I would never really argue for it to not be there. Mm -hmm. um, but for, like, a mobile game that's doing, like, the energy system, I think that's horseshit. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. You're only doing that so I come back so you get more ad revenue. Cut that shit. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. Dangerous. I mean, obviously... Obviously, for a game like this, they're not getting ad revenue, so the only point of you coming back to the game and getting, like, a better leaderboard score is so you get a better leaderboard <laughs> score. The developers don't get anything out of it other than, like, maybe a more robust community, and that's pretty useful. <laughs> oh. Oh. Explosive can destroy walls. So can I. Oh, dang. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, this will hurt you? <laughs> Uh, disc guns? Oh, yeah. It's like the Ooh. easiest way to get yourself murdered. It's a terrible gun to bring into the zone. Yeah, this is probably the worst gun to have right now. Oh, no. You'll notice there are some enemies I just run away from. You know, one thing we haven't really talked about is the two-gun system in this game. Yeah, that's fair, actually. I, I think that's actually a really important point of design, too because it totally changes the way that you play this game. If you could just hold unlimited amount of guns, first of all, that would be cumbersome, and you'd have to be like, okay, so one is this gun, two, three, four, five, you have to like remember what gun is associated with what key. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but it also like gives a lot more value. This gun. <laughs> I like the achievement of it, too, of sincere apologies. Oh, that's good. And so I don't think I can play again until... Oh, wait. Next? Oh, yeah. Okay, that's fair. So I can. Yep. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, that's all for this episode. Oi. Question of the day. What do you think about the, the daily system? I mean, obviously I have my opinions, but uh, I'm sure there's a lot more reasons that the daily system is good or bad. I, from my perspective, it doesn't do harm because it's not a requirement. But well, what do you think? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Daily system. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching, everyone, and stay tuned for the co-op stuff co -op coming, coming next. up next.